In the late 17th century, the small Puritan town of Salem, Massachusetts, became infamous for one of the most tragic episodes of mass hysteria in American history, the Salem Witch Trials. But the roots of this fear stretch back to medieval Europe, where the belief in witches and the supernatural led to widespread persecution and execution. The fear of witches was not unique to Salem, it had deep roots in medieval Europe. During the late medieval period, witchcraft was seen as heresy and a crime against God. The church and secular authorities viewed witches as people who consorted with the devil and brought harm to their communities. This fear was fueled by social, religious, and economic tensions, with wars, plagues, and famines creating a need to blame someone for the suffering. The Malleus Malficarum, or Hammer of Witches, published in 1487, became a key text that spread the fear of witches across Europe. It laid out methods for identifying, interrogating, and executing witches, leading to thousands of executions, mostly of women, across the continent. The European witch hunts eventually made their way to the New World, carried by colonists who brought their fears and superstitions with them. The Puritans in New England, who lived in a rigid, theocratic society, were particularly susceptible to fears of witchcraft. They saw the devil as a constant threat, and any misfortune was often blamed on supernatural forces. By the winter of 1691, tensions in Salem were high due to political strife, economic struggles, and conflicts with Native American tribes. This created a fertile ground for hysteria. The spark that ignited the Salem witch trials began in the home of Reverend Samuel Paris. His nine-year-old daughter, Betty, and eleven-year-old niece, Abigail Williams, began exhibiting strange behaviors, such as screaming and contorting their bodies in unnatural ways. Unable to find a physical cause, the local doctor declared them bewitched. Soon, other girls in the village began showing similar symptoms, and the panic spread rapidly. In February 1692, under pressure from local leaders, the afflicted girls accused three women of being the sources of their torment, Tituba, an enslaved woman from the Paris household, Sarah Good, a homeless beggar, and Sarah Osborne, an elderly woman who had not attended church in a long time. These women were easy targets, outsiders on the fringes of society. Under intense questioning, Tituba confessed, claiming that she, along with the other two women, had signed the devil's book. Her confession, filled with vivid details of demonic figures and animal familiars, fueled the hysteria. The trials quickly spiraled out of control. More people were accused, including prominent members of the community. The once close-knit village was torn apart by suspicion and paranoia. Neighbors turned against each other, and anyone could be accused. The trials were marked by a lack of due process and a fervent desire to root out perceived evil at any cost. Judges relied heavily on spectral evidence, where accusers claimed to see the spirits of the accused harming them. This type of evidence, impossible to prove or disprove, was accepted in court and led to numerous convictions. The first person brought to trial was Bridget Bishop, a woman with a reputation for unconventional behavior. She was found guilty and hanged on June 10, 1692. Her death was the beginning of a series of executions. Over the next few months, 19 people were hanged on Gallows Hill, and one man, Giles Corey, was pressed to death with heavy stones for refusing to enter a plea. More than 200 people were accused, and many others languished in jail in dreadful conditions. As the trials continued, the community became increasingly divided. Those who spoke out against the trials risked being accused of witchcraft themselves. The trials were swift, and the sentences were harsh. Those who confessed to witchcraft were often spared execution but lived with the stigma of their confession. Those who maintained their innocence faced death. By the fall of 1692, public opinion began to turn against the trials. Prominent figures, including Increase Mather, spoke out against the use of spectral evidence. He argued that it was better for ten suspected witches to go free than for one innocent person to be condemned. 
Governor William Phipps, influenced by growing skepticism and the pleas of his own wife, who was accused of witchcraft, ordered a halt to the trials in October 1692. Although the trials ended, the damage was done. The Salem witch trials left a lasting scar on the community and the families of the accused. Many of the victims were not exonerated until years later. In 1702, the court declared the trials unlawful and in 1711, the colony passed a bill restoring the rights and good names of those accused and granted financial restitution to their heirs. The Salem Witch Trials are a stark reminder of the dangers of mass hysteria, scapegoating, and the abuse of power. They highlight the consequences of allowing fear and superstition to override reason and justice. Today, Salem serves as a symbol of the importance of critical thinking and the protection of individual rights. The trials are remembered not just as a tragic chapter in history but as a powerful lesson for the future, to stand up against injustice and to safeguard the principles of due process and evidence-based reasoning.